Hey folks, when I say the word brownies, what images does it conjure up? Is it soft and cakey and crummy, or is it dense and chewy and fudgy? Whichever it is, we've got the recipe for you. Even if you pick the first one, we won't judge you for it. Let's get down to basics. So first up, we'll address the cake in the room, the cakey brownies, courtesy of a recipe from King Arthur Flour. Into the bowl of the stand mixer goes about two and a half cups of sugar, along with one cup or two sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature, which we are going to cream together using the paddle attachment. Once a light, fluffy consistency has been reached, we're going to combine some dry ingredients in a small bowl. One and a quarter cups of cocoa powder, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a teaspoon of baking powder, which we're going to tiny whisk together before adding to the bowl and mixing together tentatively while while we prepare our dry ingredients, I mean eggs. For this recipe, we're going with four large eggs plus one large egg white, which we're gonna to add to the bowl while the mixer mixes one at a time, making sure it's fully incorporated before adding the next egg. We're also gonna add a half a cup of water. Beat that on high speed until it's nice and creamy, and then for the final ingredient, some flour. One and a half cups of all-purpose added and mixed minimally so as not to develop too much gluten. The same sort of methodology you might employ while making pancakes. Just give that a few cursory folds to make sure that everybody's nice and incorporated incorporated, and then we're going to prepare our brownie pan. I like to rub the whole thing down with vegetable oil and then line with parchment paper. And then we are dumping in and spreading evenly our brownie batter, which we're then going to place in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 25 to 30 minutes until it resembles a cake like this one. And a toothpick when inserted off center emerges cleanly or with a few dainty moist crumbs still clinging to its wooden shaft. Then by the parchment paper, we are removing the brownies from the brownie pan and allowing to cool completely on a wire rack for at least one hour. Just enough time to make the only thing that makes cakey brownies worth eating, frosting. Into the bowl of the stand mixer goes one stick of softened butter, two and a half cups of sifted powdered sugar, half a cup of cocoa powder, and just enough milk to make things spreadable between one third to two third cups. Creamed on high speed for about one minute until finger licking delicious. Once the brownies have completely cooled, we're going to remove them from the parchment paper and frost them liberally so as that the recipients of our brownies do not die of thirst. And since we're going this far, we might as well throw some spring on there. Rainbow colored only because chocolate would just be redundant, and then you better head down to the break room because it's Karen's birthday and you only get cake if you sing. HR's birthday bylaws are perspicuous and very strict. Now, for all my trash talking, this is actually a pretty damn good brownie even by cake standards. It's still very moist, it has a nice density, I'm trying to catch my paper plate on fire, it's not work, there we go. But if you couldn't tell already, I'm more of the chewy, fudgy brownie type. For this, we turn to America's Test Kitchen, who recommends lining a brownie pan with aluminum foil and lubricating with nonstick spray. Not quite sure how I feel about this, but let's give it a shot. Go ahead and set that aside so into a large bowl we can combine. One third of one cup of cocoa powder, one and a half teaspoons of espresso powder. As I've mentioned before, this won't make it taste like coffee, it's just gonna amp up the chocolate flavor. As will two ounces of unsweetened chopped chocolate, to which we're going to add half a cup plus two tablespoons of boiling water, whisking until completely melted and incorporated. Then while it's still warm, we're adding four tablespoons of butter, letting that melt, and then an essential element chewy brownies is oil, in this case half a cup plus two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Additionally, the ratio of eggs that we use, in this case two large eggs plus two egg yolks. By this point, the mixture should have cooled significantly, so go ahead and throw the eggs in there and whisk to combine. We're also going to add a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extra- oh, come on little guy, let's go. A teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. You can also add a teaspoon of espresso powder if desired. We're going to whisk that together before adding two and one half cups of granulated sugar, preferably to a slightly larger bowl, am I right? Last but not least, once that is fully incorporated, we are adding the flour, one and three quarter cups of all purpose. You can mix this a bit more thoroughly than the previous batch because we're not trying to get the same tenderness that we would in a cakey brownie. Oh, and now actually last but not least, six ounces of chopped bittersweet chocolate. Whole unmelted chocolate is essential for a fudgy brownie. Mix that until just combined, go ahead and pour into our prepared nine by 13 brownie pan. And we're dropping this guy into a similarly preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 30 to 35 minutes until a tester emerges virtually unscathed, but with a little bit of goo still hanging to it. Then after allowing to cool one hour in the pan, we are removing by virtue of the foil. And this is the only step that I didn't understand because there was significant 
stickage to the foil despite all the nonstick spray that was used, which has always been my experience in browning making, so if you ask me, stick with the parchment paper. Once we managed to get that out of there, as you can see I've caused some significant damage to the surface integrity, but that doesn't stop this from being a majorly delicious, fudgy brownie with a truffle-like texture and a subtle chew. And while you will most certainly eat these brownies in a single bite like I'm doing here, what if you're like me and you like your brownies practically melting and with the texture of chewing gum? Well, I've got the recipe for you. Please bear in mind that when we filmed this, I only made a half batch, so I'm going to narrate the correct amounts and you can just follow along with the video for a visual reference. Into a large bowl goes one and three quarter cups of sugar with two sticks of melted butter. I'm also gonna add a teaspoon and a half of espresso powder, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and four eggs plus two egg yolks. Go ahead and give those a whisk in to combine completely before adding one cup of cocoa powder and half a cup of vegetable oil. I'm sorry I'm putting weird emphases in my sentences, I'm having a long night. Whisk that thoroughly to combine and then it's time to add my secret weapon, bread flour. In addition to all the other chew-inducing elements that we have in this recipe, bread flour is very high in gluten and will create a chewier texture. Before we add it, we are whisking it together with a teaspoon each of baking powder and kosher salt and we are chopping six ounces of bittersweet chocolate that we're gonna add to the mix before adding the flour and then we're gonna fold the whole thing together. But again, don't worry about over mixing. The more you mix, the more gluten you develop. And la di da, the chewier your brownie. This time I'm returning to the greased pan with parchment paper lining. This might not encourage the same glossy exterior you get with aluminum foil, but I just think it makes it easier to get out of the pan. And as you can see, my brownie batter doubles as I pour it into the pan because I made another batch. Anywho, this guy's going into the same 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 25 to 35 minutes until your degree of doneness has been achieved. And I like mine somewhere between barely cooked and not cooked. It's like the lava and cookie of brownies. I love it. Anyway, I hope this gives you guys some ideas on how to give up the box stuff and improve the brownies in your life. Because whether you like your brownies cakey or fudgy or chewy or other, you deserve your shot at happiness and happiness is a brownie. Hey guys, brownies. Hey folks, brownies. Brownies. For you and for me, for America, for the world, really. Um, brownies. Hey folks, brownies. When I say that word, which of the Lord of the Rings movies do you think of? Hey guys, brownies. Whether you like them swap, brownies. Does it swim or plin? Dense and chewy, brownies. Whether you like them cakey and moist or chewy and fudgy, I and many others like me will not tell you that you're wrong. What? Hey folks, when I say the word balls, when I say the word balls, <laughs> <laughs>